Welcome to Bite Wing Techniques Acquiring Digital Images, uh, also known as Exposing Radiographs. This presentation is intended for the dental assisting student. So let's look at what these techniques are for obtaining a diagnostic quality bite wing image. We're going to look at the two very standard techniques, the paralleling technique and the bisecting technique. So first let's look at the paralleling technique, which if you've seen my previous slide presentation on the introduction to bite wing radiographs or images, you'll know that I talked about an XCP, which is an image receptor holder, uh, in this case for a sensor, and this is what we use, this device is used for the paralleling technique. It will position the image receptor, in this case a sensor, with the PID and give you some guidance as to how to align the image receptor uh, and the PID to the teeth and the image receptor. Then for the bisecting technique, you can see that we really have no extra oral indication of where to align this PID with the teeth and with the image receptor. So we have to count on our knowledge of facial landmarks in order to align uh, the PID, the image receptor, to the teeth in order to obtain a diagnostic quality bite wing image. Now with film, uh, we pretty much have the same techniques. We have paralleling devices or extension cone paralleling device for film and that gives us some guidance as to how to align our PID or a tab can be used uh, and you saw that you can use either uh, a loop or an adhesive tab or a little adhesive sponge where the patient bites down and then again we need to use our knowledge of facial landmarks uh, in order to align the PID with the teeth and the image receptor to get a diagnostic quality image. Working with our patient, hello, here's Dexter again, uh, is very important, patient positioning. So a couple of rules of thumb or uh, steps to follow would be that you want the patient's, the occlusal plane of the dental arches to be parallel with the floor. So pretty much we want the patient to be in a relaxed position, looking forward, their chin needs to be um, uh, kind of level, uh, not too far down, and certainly not way up either, not pointing up. And that creates uh, the occlusal plane parallel to the floor. We, it's also helpful if the patient's head can be straight, so not leaning to one side or the other. And that would be our two uh, main points for patient positioning. And of course, we want our patient to be still, can't have them squirming around. So, uh, but when you're experienced, you, you figure out how to work with squirmy patients or patients who uh, may not be able to position their head in the ideal uh, position. We will, of course, be using our PID, our positioning indicator, device in order to obtain our image. So that's just a quick review there. And for um, whether we have our XCP or the bisecting technique, let's review some of the facial landmarks for what we call the point of entry or what your textbooks call the point of entry, how we're going to align the PID to the teeth and the image receptor. So for bite wing images, we're going to use the facial landmarks of the eye, the outer canthus and the inner canthus. Um, as we prog progress in our uh, image images and our radiographic technique, we will also use tragus of the ear, commissures of the lip, 
and the ala of the nose. Uh, but for bite wings, we pretty much use the outer canthus and inner canthus. So for the point of entry of a molar bite wing, now when you're using an XCP, um, as long as you place the image receptor uh, to capture the teeth, uh, such as the molars or the premolars, then your XCP pretty much does the work for you, although you have to have this in the right angle. So you want to make sure that the middle of it is with the outer canthus. Now if you look at my photograph here, it's not quite center. It's a good guide. Um, as I said in another presentation, 95, 90 to 95% of the time it does follow textbook. But not everybody's eye is positioned in the same place um, and so we have to account for that. But it is very, very close. So when you're placing the PID, you're going to look for, look at that outer canthus and that the middle of the pit, even though the line is back here, this is just a, a two-dimensional, so to speak, I mean, a, a really a, a drawing, even though it's a photograph, but this diagram. And so, but you want the pit, uh, it's usually the middle of the pit, to be in line with the outer canthus. And that will give you a diagnostic quality image. For the premolar, the point of entry, and this is a, really a better view, is in alignment with the inner canthus. And again, it's not totally perfect, but this one is um, uh, closer than with the molar. And then you can see our PID would be in alignment with the inner canthus. And you should get a diagnostic quality image. There's a relationship of three areas, or actually items, that need to be all in alignment to get a diagnostic quality image. You have to capture the teeth, so when you are placing the receptor into the patient's mouth, you have to focus, like, do I have the molars within this sensor? Do I have the premolars within this sensor? Um, textbooks uh, will talk about placing your image reception receptor, excuse me, with the mesial um, of the receptor, the edge of the receptor, just at the distal of the second premolar in order to capture the molars, uh, first and second molar. This is textbook ideal. It works, I would say, 90 to 95 percent of the time. Sometimes it's just best to look and make sure you have the first and second molar within the image reception, receptor. Then textbooks will also tell you that for a premolar, your uh, front edge uh, of the image receptor should be at the distal of the canine. Uh, again, this is textbook. It doesn't always work because people have different uh, lengths of their mandible or their maxilla. So again, you want to just make sure you look to see are my premolars in the middle of the sensor. So it's very important to have that sensor placed in the correct area to capture the teeth uh, which you're focusing on. And then also the PID has to be in the right angulation. So when x-rays are produced, um, the x-rays travel in a straight line. They're invisible and they travel in a straight line. So our PID is a direction, like if we could see x-rays coming out of the PID, it would be like this arrow coming out straight. So we want to imagine that there is a line and we want that line to go through the contacts of the teeth. So we get a very clear image of that proximal area, the mesial and distal surface of the teeth. And so we need the PID to be in perfect alignment so that if we could see x-rays, we would see a line traveling right through the contacts to the image receptor. 
and that is the case for whether it's a molar, a premolar, a maxillary image, or a mandibular image, or even an anterior image. So the teeth, the image receptor, and the PID have a very important relationship. If any of these are out of alignment, you will have um, an error in your image, most likely one that's called overlapping, where it looks kind of blurry and fuzzy. So let's look at some helpful hints. I hope they're helpful. Uh, techniques for obtaining quality diagnostic radiographs or images. First of all, you have to correctly assemble the image holder and the image receptor, whether you're using a sensor, a phosphor plate, or a film. You want to check the patient's mouth before you place the image receptor because we need to see, are we working with a patient that has a um, nice depth to the floor of their mouth or is it shallow? Is the palate you know, uh, kind of within a nice depth or is it shallow? Because we may have to adjust the size of our receptor or the technique or just be very sensitive, you know, that this could be a little uncomfortable for the patient and you might want to tell them, but I'll, I'll go as fast as I can so you don't have to have this in your mouth for very long. You also want to look for oral tori. If they have large oral tori, even small, we want to be very careful when we're replacing that image receptor so uh, one, it doesn't hurt them. If you're biting on hard plastic and it's poking the oral tori, that's going to be really uncomfortable for your patient. And it takes some experience in working with these types of uh, conditions of the, of the oral cavity. You want to make sure that you have your patient, their head positioned um, for an optimal image so that occlusal plane is parallel to the floor and their head is straight, not leaning to one side or the other, if at all possible. You want to place the image receptor and the holder with what I call purposeful placement. So when you're placing it in the mouth, you're looking at the teeth. And am I getting, if you're looking for molars, am I positioning my receptor where it's going to capture the molars? Am I positioning the receptor where it's going to capture the premolars? So with purposeful placement. If you watch an, an experienced dental assistant, dentist, dental hygienist um, exposing or obtaining images, um, it kind of doesn't look like we're thinking about it at all. And I equate that to when you learned how to drive. Remember when you first learned, you're looking at your mirror and your hands are at 10 and 2 and, you know, you're going through all the steps. But as, as experienced drivers, we kind of like get in the car, we think about where we're going, and we don't have to go through every single step because we're experienced. And that will happen if you're a dental assisting student and you're just starting out uh, with practice. Uh, it, it takes repetition makes better. I learned that from a colleague once. Repetition makes better. You want to ask the patient to bite slowly. You have your hands, your fingers in their mouth. So when you are working with a patient, you want to direct them so that you keep your fingers for all of your career or so that you can keep your career. So it's very important to ask the patient to bite down slowly. You also want to make sure that you're placing your PID at the correct extraoral position or the point of entry so we get a very clear view. And in some cases, um, when you're not using an XCP, you want to make sure that you have correct angulation, which I will talk about in another slide presentation uh, when we get into a little more detail about angulation. Uh, so that, again, you're getting a clear image. Now let's look at image evaluation. So for uh, our bite wing 
images, our bite wing x-rays, there is some standard criteria. And this uh, set of bite wings here is actually pretty good. We have a little error here, a little overlapping. I'll talk about that in a moment. So one of the first criteria is, do you have the teeth and anatomical structures present within a specific film? So with our bite wings, we usually have a molar bite wing and a premolar bite wing on the patient's right and on the patient's left. Do you have equal portions of the maxillary and mandibular teeth present in the image? This uh, set of bite wings uh, looks like they've accomplished that, looks really good. Is the occlusal plane parallel to the edge of the receptor? And is it straight or perhaps just slightly curved toward the posterior? Again, uh, this bite wing series certainly meets that criteria. We have a subtle smile. Usually that is a curvature that most people have to their teeth. Is the, uh, does the image present clear contact points? And this is very important in a bite wing image. The dentist needs to see the proximal surface, the mesial and distal. Is it clear? Look at this area between teeth uh, number three, uh, two and three. This is what we call overlapping. Now, we have clear contact points in other areas, so sometimes you get a little overlapping because of the position of teeth. Now, if a doctor said, I need to see between tooth number two and three, you could work with the angulation of your PID to open this contact. However, you might overlap another contact. So sometimes we have to give up a little something to get the clear quality in a bite wing. You can see that when the premolar was taken and that placement of the PID, that actually opened that contact between uh, two and three. So for the um, uh, patient, we don't always need to retake an image if it is clear in another image. And that's you know part of our patient uh, safety uh, in using dental uh, x-rays for the patient. We don't want to overexpose them because uh, the effects of x-rays are cumulative. So we keep them at a minimal uh, level and exposure. Then if you're using film, you want to be careful how it's handled uh, because we do have to touch it uh, in a certain way, put it in processing solutions, and of course it needs to be mounted. The little individual films, they're um, like slides from the old-fashioned slide projector, uh, like a negative, and you have to put them in a little film holder such as this, and you need to do it correctly. We're going to look at mounting, what's called mounting, placing the films in a holder in just a moment. So the, that's the criteria for a perfect bite wing series. So what happens if you don't meet the criteria? Well, then you have errors. And we need to know that as dental assistants because we're either uh, using a sensor, using a digital system, or the film, and we're the first to see it. We're not going to be diagnosing. In most states, that is illegal. Diagnosing is only for the dentist, um, but we want to make sure we have a good image. So if we're not placing the image receptor properly, we're not aligning the PID to the teeth in the image receptor, we're going to get errors. In this presentation, I did not actually give you visual examples, but there's lots of visual examples um, in your, uh, if you're in a program, in your textbooks, um, or on the internet. And you can simply look for um, dental radiograph errors and see well, lots of them, <laughs> lots of examples. So one could be a sensor or film placement. Maybe it's positioned too far posterior 
for the molars or too far posterior for the premolars or too far mesial and you're not capturing the teeth um, uh, that's uh, required on a particular image. Maybe you have a cone cut so your PID did not cover the image receptor. It's off a little bit. It's like having a half moon. <laughs> you know, when you look at the moon, the whole moon is still there in the sky, but because of the way the light uh, and the, I'm not a, um, an um, astronomer, but uh, because of light and the way the Earth's positioned and all of that, we only see a half moon some parts of the month. So this is kind of like a cone cut. Overlapping. I'm going to go back. We did look at overlapping between tooth number two and three, and this has to do with the position of the PID, um, that it's not in alignment for those invisible uh, x-rays to go through the contact. It's off either going too much to the distal, which usually that's what it is, or too far to the mesial. Uh, vertical angulation, either the PID is tilted too far up or too far down, that that can, uh, in a different type of image, can actually shorten your image or elongate it. Your sensor or your film might be tilted, and so you kind of have this tilted look to your bite wing. Uh, maybe you've placed your sensor backwards, reversed, uh, sensors have a little, like a little um, uh, electrical board panel inside. So you see a lot of metal instead of any teeth if you're using a sensor. If you're using a film, it just it's like it's backwards. Image missing, if you're using film, you just didn't take it, or your film got stuck in the automatic processor. Um, where I teach, we use miscellaneous error because sometimes we look at an image, it's not clear, but it's not, doesn't fall within the category of any of the typical errors. If you're using film, a patient can bite on it and actually bend it. Um, or if they have a really short palate or short floor of the mouth, it can bend. Uh, you might use a film twice and then you would have a double exposure. There's a dot on the film, and so in some offices, they're very particular about where this dot is. Is it um, in the floor of the mouth for all the bite wings? It should be away from the apex for a periapical image. If you have a film missing, we don't know where did it go? Is it in the processor? Did you just forget to take it? Did you actually throw, accidentally throw away a film? This doesn't happen um, unless you just forget to take an image with the sensor. Processing error, there could be something wrong with your chemicals, or a mounting er error when you're placing them in the little frame, it's done incorrectly. And of course, we always applaud and smile and just, you know, cheer when you have a perfect image uh, or a perfect film. Next, let's look at film mounting for the bite wing x-rays. So we normally take four images. We're going to remember that we're going to mount as if we're looking at the patient. So we have the patient's right. Let me run over here. We have the patient's left. We're also going to notice that in the middle will be the midline. So we need to have the teeth in anatomical sequence as if we're looking at the patient. So it's best to use a view box. This is a lighted box so you can work with your images uh, or work with your films because we only mount films. If you're using a digital sensor then your program already is set up that it comes, uh, the images uh, are come into the computer and appear in the computer in anatomical order. Once in a while, um, if you've clicked on a different frame, then of course your image is going to go into a frame that you've clicked on, but most of the time the programs will be sequential.
anatomically sequential. But a view box is nice. This is kind of a big view box. They make smaller ones. So, um, mounting steps, we're going to have six steps. The first one is if you're using film, this is only for film, mounting film, you're going to take the film and you're going to notice that there's a little bump or a dot. And you want to turn the, all the film on your view box with the bump out or the bump towards you or so that it's convex. You don't want it to look like it's a dimple. Now we mount with this bump toward us because it or it's an orientation from outside of the mouth as if you're looking at the patient. And that is very standard in dentistry to mount in this way. If you mount with a dimple instead of a bump out, then you're mounting as if you're sitting on the patient's tongue and looking out through their teeth. I give this a thumbs down. Um, this is not the standard that's taught in dental schools. So you do have to be careful when you're mounting as the dental assistant. This is one of our responsibilities. So if you mount incorrectly and you, the doctor looks at the images and they're just trusting that you did it correctly, it could end up being a, a, a incorrect diagnosis for the patient. That would not be good. Next, um, you want to take a look at your images and you want to determine um, if you just have like four images, just like a little pile, like you have a deck of cards, then you have to look at your images. You want to determine the molar radiographs from the premolars. So let me go back. The first thing we did is we turned all of the film with the bump up or out towards us. Now we're going to look at each image and determine which one are the molar bite wings, which one are the premolar bite wings. You want to look at your teeth and determine which way should I turn this so that we have the maxillary teeth on the, on the top and the mandibular teeth on the lower half of the image or the film. Then we're going to make sure that we have the molars toward the outer portion and the premolars toward the midline. Another uh, helpful hint is if you look at the mandibular first molars, we know that uh, most mandibular first molars have a defined furcation. So that would help you as far as mounting as to what is a mandibular molar. Then also, most people, their dentition has a slight smile to it, curving from the anterior to the posterior. So that would be another hint. This concludes the presentation on bite wing techniques, evaluating your images, and mounting films. I hope this has been useful and please look for other videos by Dental Assisting LC. Thank you.